Welcome back to Simple Trust Analysis. And this is where we were at before. We had done the shear diagram and the moment diagram for this truss. We also solved for the reactions. And we had figured out all the angles and the lengths and whatnot. A lot of trigonometry going on there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do, as we spoke of in the last video, the very end, is the method of joints. <clears throat> I'm going to get to a new page, but we're going to be Oops, continually, not continually, but we're going to be doing the same, using the same structure. But I'm just going to redraw it here. And what you want to do is you want to start where you can isolate some of the, some of the, uh, some of the internal forces, let's call them. You have external forces and internal forces. I'm just going to let you know. At this, on this truss, in this circumstance, this is joint A, and it's a pin, in what we had a four kip reaction. And then we also had, and this is what you draw for, I draw it like it's a steel tube, although it's, it doesn't need to be. And then you, you want to draw this is force AB because it's going from, from from joint A to joint B and that B's a little bit messy, I'm going to clean it up. And then you have this f internal force, force BC, let's call it. And I believe that's all you know. Um, actually, you also know that this is a 30 degree angle. Alright, and uh, you may be thinking well, uh, like always, you go ahead and do the you use your equi equilibrium equations. It's like cutting it right at the joint, but you want to use your equilibrium equations. And in a method of joints, you go from joint to joint to joint to joint, and you do just you continually do this, and you'll see exactly what we do. And it's more I like to explain things better by doing rather than and showing rather than, than trying to explain because it just gets more confusing. What I'll go back and do is explain it later. But I, I figure the best way to learn is do first and then go back and, and get the understanding of why. So we're just going to do it. We're going to do, uh, this is an equal, but equilibrium, as everything has to be. M method of, uh, I guess you could, you could take a point out here and sum the moments, but we're going to do the sum of, of the forces in what direction? Well, how do we isolate one of these? Well, we look at FBC, and we say, hey, that's going directly in the x direction. If, and, and, and this is important, you'll see in a couple steps here. This is the x, positive x. This is positive y. Then that's going to be your assumed axis, unless you specify otherwise. But we will specify otherwise later. Your sum of your forces, you can see, oh, we have all x right here. So the only, your fa, f, the force ab in the y direction is your only force in the right y direction that's undefined so we if we can actually solve for that so let's go ahead and do that so let's say some of the force in the y direction equals zero and this may not be hundred percent intuitive right off the bat but you'll get that intuition over time so you have four kips going up and then you have well we assumed it's going up but it's going to be the force of AB in the y direction we're going to break it a FAB and down into components and I don't like to call it F-A-B-Y, because that just gets nasty, but you can think of it that way. So you have, this is F-A-B, correct? And if you, one important thing is, so you don't mess up when you get down to the road, is your 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 original joint-to-joint -joint force, internal force, is always going to be your hypotenuse. And these are always going to be make the right angle. Excuse me, are your components, and they're always it's always going to be that way. So enlarging this a little bit, this is what you, you're looking at. Okay, so we know that when you have the hypotenuse, it's always going to be FAB, and we know that this is cosine because it's adjacent, and that's going to be cosine 30, and this is going to be FAB sine 30 since it's opposite. So Katoa. I'm not going to explain that anymore. So right now, if we broke FAB down to components, 
Well, FAB cosine 30 is in the x direction, so that is not in contention here since we're going with force in the y direction. But we do have a positive FAB sine 30. So we're going to say plus FAB sine 30. Well, looky there. We now have isolated FAB sine 30. And we can solve for FAB sine 30, so let's do that. AB equals, and what's going to happen is you're going to have to subtract 4, so you'll have a negative 4, and then you have to divide by sine 30. So equals negative 4 kips divided by a sine of 30 equals negative 4 divided by sine 30 equals negative 8. And that's going to be kips. So you say, negative 8, negative 8, what does that mean? Well, that means we FAB equals negative 8. This force, AB, equals negative 8. We, we actually assume the wrong direction. The force of AB is going to be going in, like so. Like, oh, shoot, okay. So force AB is actually going in to the joint, which means it's compression. So you want to... And, and especially when you're doing truss design, you want to do this. Is what I would do is you want to go ahead and get rid of negative because that will be confusing. But you want to put compression or tension. And if you always assume that your your joints are in tension, whenever they're negative, you're just like, oh, it's compression. And you do that all the time. And that's why it's important, in my opinion. And this is just my opinion, which I I think you should have the same opinion is always assume it's going out, your unknowns, and therefore every single time you will have negative, it's going to be in compression. So you just write C. You don't have to think about it, and a lot of times it will just get extremely confusing. So just always do that. Always make assume that your your forces are going out unless proved otherwise. And once you prove it, then you, you go in and you mark it down. You say, okay, this is 8 kips. And you, or FAB equals 8 kips. And therefore, you know, hey, I proved that is actually in compression. And you can even bring that over there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our original, and we're going to write that down. That we know FAB, whoops, wrong. FAB equals 8 kips compression. And let's write it up here. FAB equals 8 kips in compression. All right. That was step one. Now step two, I keep on going to the internet and not where I need to go. Step two, let's, wh where should we go next? And, and logically, I hope you say, well, we need to go to B and C because we now have one of the answers. Oh, never mind, we're not done with this yet. Step two is we need to solve for F, B, C. So the sum of forces in the X direction equals zero, of course. And we don't have any thing over here, no uh, external forces, but we do have internal force. We know one and we know FBC is positive and it's going to be going that way. All right. FBC. Now, what do we have to resist, not resist that, but to counteract that? We know it has to be an equilibrium. Well, we have right here and we assumed, actually we know now that it's going this way. So we want to make it a negative minus and we can just go ahead and FB, FAB equals 8 equals 8 cosine 30. So FBC equals 8 cosine 30, which 8 cosine 30 is 6.93 kips. And since that's positive, remember that, that means our assumption is correct, and that means we're tension. So we we have, let's go ahead and put it on our other diagram here. So FAC, which is right here, and it goes to C, FAC equals 6.93 kips, and that's in tension. And now we have the, the forces around A, that both the external forces and the internal forces are now defined. Now we need to figure out if we want to go to B or C. And I guess intuitively you have to think, well, maybe not intuitively, I keep on using that word. Let's just say you have to think, 
what do we have less unknowns and what how can I isolate more and typically when you see things that are parallel and perpendicular you're saying oh I can isolate those I can uh, make that you can and I'll show you you can actually make your XY axis like so and therefore you know force BD right here is going to be on your X your force AB is going to be on your X and your force AY is going to be or your force BC is going to be in your Y direction and then you just have to bring out the components of three kips of that external load and you'll be able to isolate them but I'll show you that and we're gonna go ahead run out of time here I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the next video so I do not feel pressured thanks and I'll see you in a few